Okay, so for today, we are going to be doing the last step of protein synthesis, which is translation. Remember when we talked about that big overarching analogy for protein synthesis, and we said that the DNA was my grandma's cookbook, the RNA was the little index card or the recipe card, and then the protein is our cookies or the final product that we're making. Today, exactly, today we're going from the recipe card, the RNA, to the cookies, the protein. So this is the step that we're going over today. The last step of protein synthesis. What happens after this step? After this step, the protein is complete and the protein is gonna go over to the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus and get folded and twisted up. You might, we're not gonna cover it in this class, but if you go on to like an AP Bio or a Bio 2, they might talk more about what happens with the proteins after they're created. After the Golgi body, where does it go? Then it goes to wherever it's needed. So it might go into the cell membrane, it might become an enzyme that's gonna help us with DNA replication. It's whatever its function is. Do we have to take chemistry next year? It is, I think that your counselor is gonna help you with figuring out which class you need to take next. For we'll some people, it's kind of definitely different. take. We'll also do individual conferences. I'll do individual conferences with all of you to talk about scheduling for next year and junior team year as well. Okay. Oh, I have a question. Like, is it mandatory? What about that protein that like you eat before you work out? So, the protein, like the protein shake that you eat. Yeah. So the protein shake that you eat is going to be broken down into your body into the amino acids. And then your body will either use that or use it to create more protein. Is the protein that you eat or consume before you work out, is that the same as this? It's kind of a part of it, yeah. It's made up of amino acids. It's actually kind of a part of it. There's a lot of different types of proteins that we can make. We're not living in it. <laughs> to start off for translation today, I'm going to, go to show you guys the V-cell video on this, just like we've been doing for the rest of the stages of protein synthesis. A lot of this video is going to look familiar. The part that I would like you guys to focus on when you're watching this video is what the tRNA is doing. What the tRNA is doing. So it's going to look like a big green squiggly blob. Focus on what that's doing during this process. Okay? And then after we watch the video, we will break it down and I can answer any questions after that too. All right. Translation is the synthesis of a protein from an mRNA template. This process involves several key molecules, including mRNA, the small and large subunits of the ribosome, tRNA, and finally, the release factor. The process is broken into three stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. Let's see the process in action. Eukaryotic mRNA, the substrate for translation, has a unique three prime end called the poly A tail. mRNA also contains codons that will encode for specific amino acids. This should all be pretty a methylated cap is signed at the five prime end. Translation initiation begins when the small subunit of the ribosome attaches to the cap and moves to the translation initiation site. tRNA is another key molecule. It contains an anticodon that is complementary to the mRNA codon to which it binds. The first mRNA codon is typically AUG. Attached to the end of the tRNA is the corresponding amino acid. Methionine corresponds to the AUG codon. The large subunit of the ribosome now binds to create the peptidyl, or P site, and the amino acyl, or A site. The first tRNA occupies the P site. The second tRNA enters the A site and is complementary to the second mRNA codon. 
The methionine is then transferred to the A-site amino acid. The first tRNA exits, the ribosome moves along the mRNA, and the next tRNA enters. It is making a rainbow. These are the basic steps of elongation. As elongation continues, the growing peptide is continually transferred to the A-site tRNA, the ribosome moves along the mRNA, and new tRNAs enter. What happens to those green things after they're done? They're going to be reused. When a stop codon is encountered in an A-site, a release enters the A-site and translation is terminated. <coughs> when termination is reached, the ribosome dissociates and the newly formed protein is released. It's so pretty. Kind of cool, right? So yeah. a lot of it is stuff that you guys have already seen, like talking about the codons and the, and the five prime cap and the three prime poly A tail. We've seen all of that already. We're just going to use what we've already made for our mRNA strand and translate it from the language of RNA to the language of proteins, which is amino acids. You've already talked about, where is it? We've already talked about this, our codon wheel. So you guys are already familiar with how this works and how we start at the middle with our codon. So the first letter is here, and then we go out for the second letter, and out again for the third letter, and it tells us which amino acid we have. Now we're just going to talk about the process by which we stick all of these amino acids together to make our one long protein chain. Okay? So what did the tRNA, those little green blobs, do in this process? Yeah. So they brought in the amino acids into the ribosome. So transcription editing and splicing all happened within the nucleus. We were copying down the information and then we were putting the cap and the tail on to protect it and we were taking out the chunks that we didn't need. That all happened in the nucleus. Now we're moving this mRNA strand out into the cytoplasm and into the ribosome. When we're looking at the ribosome, we have two different parts. We have the small subunit, which is this bottom part of the purple here. And we have the large subunit, which is the big purple piece. The large The first thing that happens in order to initiate our translation process is that we're going to look at our mRNA strand. Now the first letter here is our G. This is our G cap, or the methylated guanine cap that we've been talking about. So we're going to look at our first codon, which is AUG. What does AUG code for? Hmm? Methionine. Methionine, which is also has a little green dot on it. So we call this the start codon. A lot of times our mRNA is going to start with an AUG as the first codon in order to initiate this translation process. So here I have my little tRNA molecule, which I have cut out as a little orange piece here, and the methionine amino acid. Now this is pretty close to what a tRNA molecule actually looks like. It's a big long strand of RNA that's twisted kind of like a four-leaf clover. It's got a space up at the top where the amino acid is going to attach. And it's got this area at the bottom with three letters that we call the anticodon. So I have the three letters written here. You'll notice that the AUG it's going to bond, and the anticodon on this tRNA molecule is UAC, which is the complementary to our codon. So we already know for sure that oops, there we go. We already know for sure that AUG is going to bring in methionine because we know how to use our codon wheel. We've practiced this already. This is kind of a backup. 
this anticodon is a backup or a double check to make sure that we're bringing in the right tRNA molecule and bringing in the right amino acid. So let's give an example here. I'm going to leave this tRNA molecule up at the top here. We have our amino acid. We have the anticodon. And this is tRNA. So now we've brought in the first tRNA molecule with our amino acid. The top part of the ribosome, the large subunit, is going to link in as well. It's going to link in there we go. so that the tRNA is in the second slot. So we have one slot, two slots, three slots. We call these the A. P slot and the E slot. Oh, E slot? Sure. So let me go over that again. So we brought in, we were looking at our first codon here, AUG, and we checked our codon and said that it codes for methionine, which is also kind of called our start codon. So we found the tRNA that had methionine attached to it. And we double checked that the anticodon on the tRNA matches up and is complementary to the codon on the mRNA. So these bond together. We double checked that those fit in, fit together nicely, and that's the one that we needed to bring in. We then brought the large subunit in and linked the ribosome together. As we were doing that, this tRNA molecule ended up landing in what's called the P site, or the peptidyl site. So it's talking about the peptide bonds that we're going to be making. Now you can kind of think about this as kind of the placement site. The first site that we have here is called the A site, also called the amino acyl site. So we're looking at the amino acids. A good way to remember that it's called the A site is that it's going to be the arrival site. Wait, what is this the amino what site? Amino acyl. Like amino amino acyl site. What is, wait, what is that amino the amino acyl site is going to be where our tRNAs are going to start to arrive as we go into elongation. Okay. It's referred to as the amino acyl site because we're going to be looking at our amino acids that are in there. So you kind of think of this as the arrival site. The E site is the last site, and we're going to think about this as the exit site. So we kind of have the arrival site, the placement site, and the exit site. So this is initiation. We've had our mRNA leave the nucleus and it's in the ribosome. We attached on the small subunit, brought in the first tRNA molecule, and attached the large subunit. Now we're going to jump into elongation, which is where in the video they were building that nice big long string of rainbow protein. So we're going to look at our next code on here, CGC. What does CGC code for? Arginine. Arginine. Where's my arginine? Here we go. So we're going to bring that into the arrival site here. 
You'll notice that my anti-codon on my tRNA double checks and matches up with the codon that we have here. So we know this is the right one that we need to bring in. It's fantastic. Wait, what is the what is the placement here? Is that where the first one is? So this is where the, the yellow area here, the P site, is where that first tRNA molecule is going to end up when we bring in the large subunit. We'll show more here in a second as to how this these two sites are important and how they're going to be working together. Oh, I figured that around. Because, like, like, that one is a placement and the other one is on a rise, but isn't that, like, doing the same thing? Kind of. It's how it's going to be moving down. Okay. So when we bring in our new arrival tRNA here, Kristen? Sorry. When we bring in our new tRNA molecule here, we're going to then take our methionine amino acid from the P site and we're going to transfer it over and create a bond in between the methionine and the arginine amino acids. What kind of bond is it? It's called a polypeptide bond. It's the same one that connects the phosphate and sugar DNA, isn't it? That one's slightly different. That's a phosphodiester. Yep. So this is called a polypeptide bond. So we're going to transfer that methionine amino acid from the P site over and attach it onto the arginine here with the polypeptide bond. Now we're going to slide the whole ribosome down a codon. So we're going to slide that down, we're going to slide this down. As we're sliding it down, these tRNAs are still bonded to the codon. So they shift over one site. They shift over one slot. Now we can't have one just hanging out in the E site here. So this one is going to exit. Oh, so then like a new one comes in. Exactly. Oh, it's like a, so um, now it looks like where we started out with our first amino acid. That's easy. Okay, that makes so what's sense. the next one here? Um, we have CGC, so AUU. What does AUU come for? That's <laughs> well AUU. Isoleucine. There we go. Isoleucine. So isoleucine. Whoops. These magnets are not very strong. There we go. <coughs> so we have isoleucine here is going to come in with our tRNA molecule. We're going to double check that the anticodon and the codon are complementary, which they are. And then we're going to transfer this over here. Oh, so they both shift over. It and then both shifts then, over. And then they shift over. Well. We created our polypeptide bond to now attach arginine to isoleucine. So now we have a chain of three. We're then going to shift everything down a codon. Stay. We're going to shift everything down a codon. We can't have one just hanging out in the exit slot. So this one is going to leave. And now we have a chain of three. We're going to keep building onto it in this way as far as our mRNA strand goes. So we're going to keep going down and keep adding on the amino acids for each of our codons. What about the stop codon? So what about the stop codon? So my stop codon here, I have right before the poly A tail. So let's say that we're skipping over all of these here. We've made all of our protein chain. And now we've run into this UAG stop codon. You'll notice here, UAG is one of our three stop codons that we have. When we run into that, we don't have a tRNA with a complementary strand here that has an amino acid attached to it. Instead, we have what's called a release factor. It's going to come in. Once it binds into the A site, Everything is going to break apart because we've now released all of these proteins. 
So this is going to move away. The small and large subunits are going to move away. The tRNA is going to move away. All of these molecules, the small and large subunit, and the tRNA and the release factor, are going to be reused in order to make other proteins as well. When is the so the release, oh, sorry, the release, no, you're good. Oh, the release factor doesn't actually attach to that chain. No, the release factor isn't actually going to attach to our chain. It's just going to come in here and act as a stop. Okay. In order to signal that, okay, we're done. We've made our chain. We've made our full protein. We can break everything apart now and be finished. So now this is our full protein. This full protein is going to then end up moving into the Golgi apparatus in order to get folded and twisted into the correct shape that we need in order to either have it go into the cell membrane, in order to have it work as an enzyme in some other reaction, whatever function that we need it for. We've got to fold it and twist it so that it can fit that function. You guys want to watch the video again and see yeah. it kind of in action? I like this video because I, it's good that it puts it as like the rainbow because then it's easy to see the relationship between the amino acids and the codons. <coughs> molecules, oh. including mRNA, the small and large subunits of the ribosome, <coughs> tRNA, and finally, the release factor. The process is broken into three stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. Let's see the process in action. Eukaryotic mRNA, the substrate for translation, has a unique three prime end called the poly A tail. mRNA also contains codons that will encode for specific amino acids. A methylated cap is found at the five prime end. Translation initiation begins when the small subunit of the ribosome attaches to the cap and moves to the translation initiation site. tRNA is another key molecule. It contains an anticodon that is complementary to the mRNA codon to which it binds. The first mRNA codon is typically AUG. Attached to the end of the tRNA is the corresponding amino acid. Methionine corresponds to the AUG codon. The large subunit of the ribosome now binds to create the peptidyl, or P-site, and the amino acyl, or A-site. The first tRNA occupies the P-site. The second tRNA enters the A-site and is complementary to the second mRNA codon. The methionine is then transferred to the A-site amino acid. So here is where that polypeptide bond is going to form in between them. So we're going to have this amino acid transfer over and bind with our next amino acid in order to make a chain. Yes, Roy? So it starts with like AUG a lot, so that means that the first codon for, or the first amino acid for a lot of proteins is going to be methionine. Methionine, yeah. So a lot of our amino, or a lot of the mRNA strands start with AUG because it's considered a start codon. So a lot of the protein chains that we have are going to start with methionine, which is the amino acid that goes with the codon AUG. The first tRNA exits, the ribosome moves along the mRNA, and the next tRNA enters. So we're always going to have the ribosome moving down the mRNA, not the, the mRNA moving the through the ribosome. Oh, so like the As elongation continues, yes. the growing peptide is continually transferred to the A-site tRNA. So look at how this guy. along the mRNA, 
and that's the moving. The ribosome is moving, not the mRNA. When a stop codon is encountered in the A site, a release factor enters the A site and translation is terminated. When termination is reached, the ribosome dissociates and the newly formed protein is released. Questions on that? It's a lot of what you guys have already learned, and then we're just adding in the movement of those tRNA molecules and bringing in the amino acids. Now, when we're looking at it, the codon wheel and our codons, we can see that there's a lot of different options in order to get to our 20 different amino acids. So we have 20 amino acids along the outside of the wheel here. Some of them are in other places, so we can have a leucine that starts with a C, or we can have a leucine that starts with a U, but it both codes for the same amino acid. Now, having four different bases, G, U, A, and C, to make these 20 different amino acids means that we have 64 different combinations of the codons. So we could have A, G, or A, C, G, ACA, ACC, and ACU, which is four different codons, all coding for the same amino acid here. So that's how we are able to make four bases code for all of these different amino acids. Remember, all of our proteins are just combinations and just different orders of these 20 amino acids. That's it. We put them in a different order, maybe have a couple of different ingredients mixed in there, Maybe it's changed shape just a little bit. For the most part, it's all about the amino acid, ingredients, and the order. Questions on this? So for today then, for the rest of class, here's a couple things that I would like you to be working on and practicing. So there's a couple of questions left in that building blocks of a protein packet just finishing up a little bit of coding questions and the translation questions. This paper here then, on the hospital table up front, is going to be this protein synthesis worksheet. So this is going from DNA to mRNA, and then having you go from the amino acids, and also having you write to the anticodons on the tRNA. So I'm gonna have everyone come grab one of these, and then I will kind of walk you guys through how we're gonna be we're going to be doing this. 